In the news tonight, 29 new cases linked to existing clusters. Kava consumption ban can be recommended. And Fijians continue to receive COVID-19 vaccine. From the studios of FBC Suba, Edwin Nan. Kulavnaka, Fiji. The Ministry of Health has recorded 29 new COVID-19 cases. Six were confirmed last night, while another 23 were recorded this morning. Permanent Secretary for Health Dr. James Fong says all new cases are linked to existing clusters and are stable and either in isolation facilities or home isolation. And Apanisa Wangerandovu joins us live now. Apanisa, communities and clusters, are, rather which communities and clusters are these new cases linked to? Edwin, the Navy cluster has recorded 15 new cases. There have also been nine new cases linked to the Nawakanandi cluster, while there are three cases from the Waila cluster and two linked to the Narere cluster. The ministry has now recorded 429 cases in total since March of last year when we first uh, detected the, the first case in Fiji. And... Uh, since then, the current, uh, during the current outbreak, there have been 359 cases in total. There have been uh, three recoveries as well, which have been uh, uh, stated by the Ministry of Health, which means there are now 258 uh, active cases. All cases are, in, uh, are stable at the moment, except for two which have been considered severe by the Ministry of Health. The Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, has also stated that uh, they have received the genomic uh, sequencing results which uh, was sent to Melbourne, Australia and uh, to, to reveal the positive samples that are currently active during this pandemic and uh, they have uh, identified that it is the same, uh, the same variant that uh, was uh, detected during the second outbreak which is the Indian variant that is the B.1.617.2 and that variant is currently uh, moving around or circulating in the community. Edwin. Naka Felipe, Permanent Secretary for Health. Dr. James Fong is warning that he will not hesitate to recommend a complete ban on kava consumption as Fijians continue to break social gathering restrictions. Reports of COVID-infected persons drinking grog with others from outside their households have been received by the ministry. In the last 24 hours alone, seven people were arrested in Namotomoto Nandi for drinking kava. Kuroi Tandulala reports. Kava consumption may have been woven into the fabric of our culture. However, the practice of drinking out of a common bowl creates the perfect condition for the virus to spread. Don't invite anyone to your house. Don't go to anyone else's house. Don't share a bowl with colleagues after work or during work or in any other place. I know many of you are very familiar with the small shed that is sitting at the back of the workplace where we all gather and we all enjoy a, a basin of grog. We need to ban it. Cover Corp Fiji Chief Executive John Sunday stresses that Fijians must follow the measures in place and not invite people from outside their household. We should all always follow government uh, protocols, uh, in particular this time of pandemic, so that we can maintain and contain this, this, this virus. Family bubbles to stay within their homes. And Drinking grog is not the only concern for the ministry, as they've also identified other factors contributing to the quick spread of the virus. Another factor that is pro promoting the spread, and that is where many people live or work in a limited space. The Ministry of Health strongly emphasizes the need to protect personal space at home and at work by making sure COVID-safe measures are followed at all times. Koroi Tandulala, FBC News. And we now join Koroi Tandulala live. Koroi, drinking kava is indeed a main concern. So is unnecessary movement. What are the authorities saying regarding these issues? Vinaka Edwin, police in its daily COVID-19 related arrests have been saying that drinking grog is always among the list of COVID-19 breaches recorded on the daily, along with people found being intoxicated or for alcohol consumption. Police have also turned away a lot of people from checkpoints within containment areas for not having a valid enough reason to travel. Now the Acting Commissioner of Police, Rusiati Tunravu, together with the Ministry of Health, have identified that there's only three reasons where people should be traveling out of 
their homes in containment zones and these are either if they're going out to do their shopping, seeking medical assistance or if they are going to work. And now for the working category, it's only for businesses that have been approved to operate as well as essential businesses. Now the acting Kompol is calling on Fijians to be patient as the relevant authorities are working to contain this pandemic. Edwin. Nakakuroi. Health teams are trying to facilitate requests from Fijians for home vaccination as they are unable to reach designated sites due to medical conditions. Task Force Head Dr. Rachel Davy says while the COVID-19 vaccination mobile teams leverage the opportunity and vaccinate every eligible individual in the household, the system is a bit slow. Kritika Kumar reports. Certain important rules are impacting the number of vaccination that the mobile teams are able to administer in a day. For obvious reasons, because any jab we do, whether it be a kid or an adult, we have to observe them for at least a good 10 to 15, 20 minutes or so in case if they have any reaction to, um, um, to it. And that's just normal practice that we do, just, just uh, good practice that we've always used. Dr. Devi says the team is in constant contact with the vulnerable group to ensure they get access to the vaccine. We know them, we've been approaching them. Uh, our teams on the ground have been uh, talking, them, talking to them individually and uh, calling them up and uh, sort of like scheduling them for the day. So I know sometimes they visit almost 40 households in a day. The vaccination program is continuing this week and a new shipment of vaccine arrived in the country yesterday. We've administered about 36,885 doses from the 24th or 24th to the 29th of May, 33,077 first doses and 3,808 second doses. The permanent secretary says once this new batch finishes, a total of 260,000 people in the country would have received their first dose. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. And the vaccination drive is also continuing in the Western Division. Felipe Naikaso joins us live now. Felipe, what's the response been from the public? Well, Edwin, here in Nandi, the having the KFG app on and also bringing the hand sanitizers. The only issue today at Nandi College was that there wasn't uh, social distancing uh, was an issue, but the uh, police and the military officers who were there stepped in quickly to ensure that people weren't too crowded while lining up to get their jabs. So uh, for Fijians who are also thinking of going to get their jabs, don't worry, the vaccination drive here in the Western Division will continue until Friday. Inika Vilaka Felipe, excuse me. And up ahead, pandemic impacts over 9,000 USP students and Kai sales decline. Welcome back. An inspection team will conduct regular checks on the businesses to ensure all COVID safe measures are followed. Enforcement teams on the ground will include Ministry of Trade officials, Fiji Police and the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission. Kritika Kumar reports. Businesses cannot go back to operating in the usual manner as we are still battling the second wave of the pandemic. With a number of these businesses, the discussions are quite advanced. And uh, we are very confident that some of these businesses can be given approval to, uh, to operate. Shahin Ali says all applications will be approved on a case-by-case -case basis. We will be um, doing random checks and uh, ensuring that the businesses are, are aware of the requirements. Uh, there is no uh, crowding or gathering uh, taking place unnecessarily. And, uh, and they will be sort of uh, working with the businesses to ensure that these measures are followed. According to the Fiji Commerce and Employers Federation, a lot of businesses are willing to adhere to the COVID safe measures. We're talking to the various government departments, whether it be Health, Ministry of Commerce, um, to assist those businesses to help open up safely. You know, um, a lot of the businesses are happy to adhere to the protocols that have been set out. 
Only essential and approved businesses are allowed to operate in the Lami, Suva and Nosori containment zones. The MC Triple T will continue to assess applications for the passes through the COVID pass portal. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Fiji Cancer Society has recorded four deaths during the lockdown and border restriction period and there are fears of more unreported fatalities. Chief Executive Belinda Chan says prior to merging of the Lamy, Suva and Nosori containment border, a good number of patients were not able to access chemotherapy. Kelly Vadala reports. Access to hospitals and clinics were a challenge for majority of the cancer patients during lockdown. I only know of two that have come to my attention. And in the West, I think it was flagged uh, today in, uh, when they forwarded their report that there were two from Nandi. The Fiji Cancer Society says delaying treatment for patients could be fatal, especially chemo. Ideally, when they do chemo, it's good that they, they're able to attend each session as and when specified. By the, by the nurse at the oncology unit. With some restrictions easing, patients are now going to the C. Dublin Hospital for treatment. So those elective surgeries are on hold, but however, if there is uh, emergencies, we're still proceeding with our life threatening and surgeries. The Fiji Cancer Society continues to provide services to patients outside of the containment zones and issuing supplies for further treatment. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The University of the South Pacific is juggling with quality learning outcomes and adjusting the education system to meet the challenges posed by COVID-19. The institution is making changes relevant to the needs of students. Christiana Uluwai reports, however, that a third of the students will fall between the cracks during these trying times. With more than 28,000 USP students registered for the semester, an estimated 9,000 are facing challenges accessing the 800 university courses online during this pandemic. Based on data, uh, we have potentially, as I mentioned, potentially we've got most likely one third of our students will fall through the crack eh? and we're trying to minimize that. Student association bodies say they are communicating with relevant stakeholders to ensure all students get the support in these trying times. We're trying to indulge more with the commercial department, with the library department, more with DVC GTOS office and more like formulating with the HP itself. Education institutions are challenged with trying to balance the quality of education while ensuring students do not fall victims to a pre-pandemic learning system. The last thing that we want to do is that when we change the, the mode of delivery from face-to-face -to, -face to online, there will be an impact in the learning outcomes. Meanwhile, the Fiji Higher Education Commission have been communicating with certain learning institutions on the challenges posed by COVID-19 and how they can work together to ensure that quality is not compromised during this pandemic. Christiana Uluwai, FBC News. About 10 female vendors of Naroro village in Nanonga have noted a decline in revenue from the sale of freshwater mussels at the Singatoka market. Community health worker and vendor Meiva Varum, uh, rather, Vurambere says restrictions have resulted in them having to wait in line for space at the market due to fewer customers and an oversupply of kai. Josiah Nanunga reports. Despite the community restrictions and curfew time in place, these Naroro women are not giving up and remain optimistic that kai sales will pick up over the next few months. When we go to the market, it's always full and most stalls are still occupied by other vendors due to fewer customers. Before COVID-19, our business was thriving as hotel workers were our main customers. The village heads have been in constant contact with relevant authorities to ensure some leeway are given for villagers to fetch food from their farms and wealth from the Sinatoka River for sustenance. We are thankful that we still have a chance to secure foods and other essential items despite the current restrictions. Villages are now following strict protocols to contain the spread of COVID-19. Village elder Tevita Kuroyasi says the safety of Nororo villages is paramount. We are not receiving any visitors and most youths are part of the village COVID-19 response team. 
we will support the government's stance to co contain COVID-19. The village is not letting its guards down in the fight against COVID-19, even though Singatoka hasn't recorded any new case. Chosei Nanuga, FBC News. Coming up in world news, Israel to form a new coalition government. And India's COVID war continues. Majority of business owners in Nandi are glad that certain restrictions have been eased for the Western Division. A number of shops that were closed for over a month due to the threat of COVID-19 have finally resumed operations. Felipe Naikaso has more. It's a bit of a relief for business operators in the Jet Set town as allowing more shops to open will generate economic activity. I see it is a good thing because uh, I, I was really worried about my employees who have uh, not been paid for so long. It's diff difficult for them and a uh, lot of other employees, of course. Nandi town was a bit more busy than usual today as other shops are now allowed to operate except for high-risk businesses. But strict COVID protocols are being enforced for the retailers. Yes, we do follow all the protocols that is uh, described by the government. And yeah, we do follow them. For us, the entertainment industry, we can provide these services because the cinemas are still closed. A few businesses remain hopeful that they can be assisted during this difficult period. Just uh, rent for one month if it can be uh, like they, they should not take the rent for one month. The opening up of the Nandi and Lotoka border is also an advantage for businesses as they can expect customers from both areas. Philippe and I, Caso, FBC News. Local beer has been running out of stock in many shops and supermarket chains as Paradise Beverages has been closed for production and sales since April 19th. The company says they are significantly impacted by the second wave. In a statement, the manufacturers confirm they have made applications to reopen, but this has been unsuccessful. Paradise Beverages say they focus right now is protecting the health of the people, both mentally and physically, and supporting its customer while following the COVID restrictions. Here yeah, the local exchange rates are set early this morning. The Sangamoli lost ground against most major currencies, including the Chinese Yuan, the Japanese Yen, the PNG Kina, Euro and the US Dollar, but was pegged higher against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi Dollars. On the commodities market, crude oil declined, closing at $66 a barrel. Gold rose, closing at $1,908 per ounce. And silver was also up by 28.03 per ounce. And we now join Gary from HFC Bank to give us the latest figures from the money market. A quick look at trades on our local South Pacific Stock Exchange. Close to 118,000 shares valued at around $91,000 were traded in 27 transactions last week. Following these trades, the market value for the SPX fell by 2.09% and concluded at $3.21 billion. For the currencies, the U.S. dollar held near a two-month high against the yen. This was after a key measure of U.S. inflation showed stronger price gains than expected. U.S. consumer prices surged in April, with a measure of underlying inflation blowing past the Federal Reserve's 2% target and posting its largest annual gain since 1992. The core personal consumption expenditure price index, which is the Federal Reserve's preferred gauge of inflation, rose 3.1% from a year ago a tad above market expectations of 2.9%. For the week ahead, some key economic data is expected to be released from Australia. Their GDP stats and policy meeting minutes will come out on Wednesday, while their balance of trade and retail sales data will be released later in the week. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Finaka.
FMF Foods Limited is seeing a reduction in its sale volumes, which will have an impact on the year and financials. In a market announcement, the company says the economic downturn following the second wave of the coronavirus infections in Fiji and the current containment measures have affected consumer spending. Managing Director Sanjay Punja says they have put on hold all major new capital programs. Punja says with the lockdown in many countries and the port congestions, FMF Foods is witnessing irregular shipping schedules coupled with increase in raw material and logistic costs. The FMF group falls under the essential category and is operating under COVID protocols. And that is the latest from my end, but coming up after the break, chef turned taxi driver woman shares her inspiring journey. Stay with us. Welcome back. Fiji has lost about 50% of coral on shallow reef areas due to bleaching, causing great concern for communities along the coast. Marine life that helped damaged coral reefs recover may be in decline. And for this reason, the Wildlife Conservation Society is taking action to ensure our reefs remain sustainable. Jeshulal reports. Wildlife Conservation Society Director Sangeeta Mangubai says reefs along Vitilevu's coral coast have not been spared from the harsh impacts of climate change. The uh, research areas that we're working on around this space is we do things from everything from looking and monitoring coral bleaching events when they happen, so measuring and how much coral bleaching is happening on our coral reefs. Mangubai says stressful events caused by climate change like storms, cyclones, floods and warming seas has had a harmful impact on mm. corals. We're trying to work with our local communities and support them develop. Uh, what are called reach to reef management plans. So managing from the mountains all the way down to the oceans, thinking about how climate change is impacting them now and into the future. And also under the ITOKFS uh, focus, the area on conservation and uh, ensuring a resilient uh, community. The mass coral bleaching of shallow reefs along Vitilevu's coral coast have been declared the worst in the last 21 years. Jeshulal. FBC News. Ministry of Health Chief Medical Advisor Dr. Chemesa Tundrabu says even though operations at the Lotoka Hospital will resume tomorrow, the VMAT facility will continue to provide support for the next few days. The facility was providing medical services after the Lotoka Hospital was put in lockdown due to cases of COVID-19 from within. Dr. Tundrabu says they should start setting up the same FEMAC facility in Suva from Sunday. However, a location is yet to be identified. And then they'll start to uh, pull down uh, the tents, uh, organize the movement of uh, the logistics of moving uh, the equipment and uh, medicines and all the supplies back to Suva. And by Sunday, they should be out of Lotoka and back to uh, Suva. More women are now providing taxi services. Neelam Prasad, a former chef, says becoming a taxi driver after retirement has been the best decision. Apanisa Wangai Randovo reports Prasad is one of the few women paving the way for others in a male-dominated profession. Neelam Prasad left her job three years ago and started driving taxi and has no regrets with her newfound profession. I was chef in hospital, Nasori Health Center. It wasn't too hard to make the decision. It's good to drive a taxi, it's too, because it's a job to wear. The 53-year-old says when she retired from chef duties, she did not feel like staying at home. I was staying home after my uh, retiring age, I was staying home, so I decided to do something. She is encouraging other women to join the taxi industry. We two, two females were driving from here. Uh, this work is challenging. We ladies, we can do anything. We like them too much. We uh, like them because everybody wants to do the job. Eh? Everybody wants to do the job. Now, female or male, feed the children like that. And 
feed the family. Prasad says while the business is down due to the pandemic, she is happy to still earn enough to provide for her family in these trying times. Apenisong Gerdovu, FBC News. And now we join Jamie for the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening ahead in sports. Bati 3 makes New South Wales squad. And gold medalist back Fiji 7s. This and more coming up. Three players who are expected to make the Fiji Mbati side for this year's Rugby League World Cup have been included in the New South Wales State of Origin Game 1 squad. While this could be an indication of them being roped into the Kangaroos, the Fiji National Rugby League is still over the moon about the selection. Akwila Dama has more. The three players are Daniel Saifiti, Apisai Koroisau and Tariq Sims. And their selection means they could make the Australian squad for the World Cup if they're going to be selected in the Australian team in the World Cup. So you know, for me, it'll open another opportunities for other players that's been eyed for the for the World Cup this year. So it is a blessing. And I want to wish them all the best for, their, for them being selected in the New South Wales State of Origin side. For the FNRL, the news comes at the right time with the Seal Tales in Australia and the sport's biggest event just around the corner. For the party when preparing for, for the World Cup, it's simply you know, another uh, great uh, milestone for the team. We have three of their brothers play along other uh, you know, top uh, Australian rugby league players. They could also make it into the Australian Kangaroos. 28-year-old Corisau is more likely to earn his debut as an 18th man as he has been named as one of the two reserves. Origin 1 will be held next Wednesday at the Melbourne Cricket Ground in Victoria. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. The FNRL is proud of its younger players who are currently being exposed to top-level competition in Australia. With the Kaibiti Silk Tales progressing in the Iran Massey Cup competition and two local players being exposed in the New South Wales Cup and the Jersey Flag Cup, the spots for the Fiji Mbati will be well fought for. Venina Rakautonga reports. As the Rugby League World Cup draws closer, it's a mighty tussle between local and overseas base players. It has been a dream, uh, long, long time coming, and um, to get these players into a, a competitive platform uh, and something they've never had, and previous players have never had uh, uh, while while playing in Fiji. Penyoni Tangituimua is an example of one of the local players that has been given enough exposure to represent Fiji at the World Cup. The 22-year-old says more practice and game time will help him. Uh, that is something that I will try and improve on personally to help myself, especially when I'm out there playing. And this will only improve with more training and ex exposure to the rate of this play. Playing in the New South Wales Cup for North Sydney Bears, Tangi Tuimua has set his goals. Uh, I'm expecting to improve on uh, from all my weaknesses from last week's game and to perform to the best of my ability. The Kaiviti Silk Tales will play against Dirty Reds at Henson Park in Sydney on Saturday. Veni Narakautonga, FBC Sports. Daniel Saifiti sealed the win for the Knights, scoring a last-minute try as they triumphed over Manly 18-10 last night. Knights had a 12-10 lead at the break, with Saifiti crashing over under the post with less than two minutes remaining. Fiji created history in 2016 by becoming the first Pacific Island country to win gold at the Olympics. Now members of the same gold medal winning team have come together to show their support for our current national squad as they prepare for the daunting task of defending it. Karlaini Taibi reports. Fiji. The Olympic journey has been a bumpy one for the Fiji national men's seventh team after the country was hit by the second wave of the pandemic, affecting the team's preparation.
Over the past few weeks, the team had been facing a lot of challenges. I was talking to Mastanava and he mentioned that it has been six weeks since the team had been away from family, and I know it must be hard for them. The message is clear from Veramalua, Kolini Sao and Ndakuwanga. Work hard and make your country proud. My advice to the players is that nothing comes easy and it takes patience and hard work to reach their end goal. Listen to the directive set by the coach and the FRU officials. You know, keep working hard, keep, tra keep training. Uh, I'm obviously listen to what's uh, been uh, told by the government on uh, lockdown. I have a full confidence that the team uh, that we have right now will be able to deliver the much needed result. Fiji will be joining trans-Tasman rivals Australia and New Zealand in a tri-series in a tropical Queensland at the end of June as a build-up for the Olympics. Carly Nitavi, FBC Sports. The Highlanders remain unbeaten in Super Rugby Trans Tasman, recording their third win yesterday after beating Melbourne Rebels 42-27. to Fiji-born John Anareki scored a try for the Highlanders, while Wallabies speedster Marika Korimbete dotted down twice for the Rebels. The celebrations are continuing for Chelsea today as they returned home from Portugal as champions of Europe after beating Manchester City 1-0 yesterday. With the Blues on top of Super Rugby Trans Tasman, their play has been absolutely gold to watch. In their, in their latest outing against the Brumbies, halfback Finley Christie scored a contender for try of the season after blitzing the Brumbies' defense in a spectacular scramble to the try line. Fire can just about make any sport more intense, and while playing hockey on unicycles is strange enough, but setting the puck on fire takes it to a whole new level. In our quirky sport of the day, flaming puck unicycle hockey. That's it from Sports Tonight. Coming up in Weird and Wonderful, a look at different pets that, best, uh, that are best suited rather to coexist in the same home. Details after the break. A trough of low pressure is approaching the group from the west. Associated cloud and showers continue to affect the group. It's expected to clear later on Wednesday. In the west, humid with considerate cloudiness. There were light showers in the afternoon. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, the day started with some sun, but there were increasing clouds with occasional heavy rain after midday. And in the north, mostly cloudy with a couple of thunderstorms. At sea, a damaging heavy swell warning remains in force for Mamanuda waters, southern Viti Levu waters, Kandavu Passage, southern Koro Sea and southern Lao waters. There will be southerly winds 10 to 15 knots with gusts to 25 knots. The damaging heavy swells will have heights of up to 4 meters. The next high tide is at 11.19 p.m. with low tide at 5.13 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.31. For tomorrow, occasional showers over most places, isolated thunderstorms and heavy falls expected. And the further outlook is for damaging heavy swells abating, showers easing and clearing from the west. And in Fiji and Pulse this week, we ask, do you think it's good that certain restrictions are being lifted for the west? Yeah, go to Taiki. I'm glad businesses are open since we all get the chance to come back to work. Yes, I think it's a good idea for the government because the families were suffering. It was more than a month we were staying home without a job. Yes, I'm happy that everything is uh, getting a bit normal now and uh, I'm happy at least uh, we have jobs. Yes, it's good so that we can work and, and for our family too. Eh?
And in these trying times, some are looking for companionship, while others to add to family. So how about pets? And what are some pets that may be a good match for your family if you have a dog or kids? So you're looking to expand your animal family. But your dog Lola has been with you a while. You'll need a pet that won't ruffle Lola's feathers. What about a chicken? Pop Sugar says chickens and dogs can peacefully coexist. And it's best to introduce the dog when the chickens are chicks, so they have time to acclimate. Parents.com says a hamster can get along with a dog and your child if you have one. Dr. Catherine Questenberry, she's an exotic pets expert at New York City's Animal Medical Center, tells parents that choosing a bigger breed like a Syrian hamster may be a better choice for your family, as the smaller breeds can be nippy and aggressive. A rabbit can also be a good furry friend for dogs and kids. And don't forget cats, they can also peacefully coexist. But it's best to take time introducing a dog and cat to make sure they are a match so you can all live happily ever after. And recapping our main stories, 29 new cases linked to existing clusters. Kava consumption ban can be recommended and Fijians continue to receive COVID-19 vaccines. For these stories and others, tune in to our sister station, Gold FM, to our poll question. Last week, we asked, do you think Fijians are abiding by restrictions to curb the spread of COVID-19? 59% answered yes. This week, we are asking, are you ready for the opening up of businesses to help support the economy? And you can uh, visit our FPC News website to answer. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts. You can also download the FPC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda.